Canada is getting new warships. Not you, real warships. Here we go. You probably know it as the Canadian Surface Combatant Project, but what you might not realize is this will become the most complex shipbuilding initiative Canada has seen since the Second World War, so it's a pretty big deal. Canada envisions 15 of these new vessels taking the lead in our global initiatives to counter piracy and terrorist activity, enforce embargo and interdiction work, and provide all manner of humanitarian aid, search and rescue, and sovereignty enforcement. Okay, so look, the Navy's still pretty upset about having the worst dress uniforms. So for this one video, I'm going to largely avoid any cost or procurement controversy. Hey, get out of here. Get. Instead, let's just concentrate on the capability of these vessels. So come geek out with me. The first ships on the water won't actually be flying a Canadian flag. Our Australian and UK allies have already committed to building their own versions of the Type 26 frigate. And they're getting their toys first. The UK has their first ship out of eight, the HMS Glasgow, now sufficiently complete to the point where they can assign sailors to the vessel. The Glasgow will act as both a submarine killer and an important defensive asset for British aircraft carriers. The British Type 26 frigates will be armed with the future cruise anti-ship weapon. This modern weapon system is designed to be hypersonic, agile, and intelligent. Once launched, its missiles can track fast-moving ships outsmart decoys, and carry payloads with the ability to kill hardened targets. These weapons are expected to replace the existing Harpoon, Scalp, and Storm Shadow missiles. Expect to see these ships in British waters by mid-2020s, with the first expected to enter service by 2026. Now the Australian Type 26 will be defined as a hunter class, with a slightly different assortment of weapon systems. They are buying a total of 9 vessels, for an estimated cost of around 35 billion Aussie dollars, or dollaroos. They begin cutting steel for their first ship this December, with plans to become operational with the Royal Australian Navy around the end of this decade. As for Canada, we decided on the Type 26 after ruling out the comparable Italian-French Frem frigate and the lower cost Type 31. The Department of National Defense has remained confident that the Type 26 is the right ship for the Royal Canadian Navy, considered as both a replacement for our decommissioned destroyers and our currently aging fleet of Halifax frigates. The design plan for the Canadian versions is to be outfitted for a more general purpose approach. This means that our ships will be outfitted to perform in both the anti-sub and anti-air warfare categories. This decision was made so that the 15 vessels shared an identical standard. Now after they are split between the Atlantic and Pacific fleets, this will enable them to be fully interchangeable across the spectrum of our naval operations. Comment section enthusiasts will be very happy to hear the Type 26 is a warship at its core, vastly better armed than the Arctic patrol ships we have previously featured. For myself and other uninformed people, missiles are just missiles. And from the distant bridge of an Iranian patrol boat, they're kind of all going to look alike. However, rumor around soup time was that the Canadian Type 26 could include Tomahawk cruise missiles for some serious naval fire support. I for one think this calls for the design of a new morale patch for anyone lucky enough to fire one of these off. Jella, boom. Boom, yeah. I understand boom. Big. Got a big boom. Yeah. Boom. Personally, I can't wait to see this 127mm naval gun in action. Then we have the Sea Scepter defensive system, which looks to be a nice addition to the two SeaWiz close-in weapon systems found on board. Capable of defending itself and other high-value assets, these probably very expensive missiles can neutralize threats ranging from combat aircraft to supersonic anti-ship missiles. This vessel is starting to look very well kitted out. The Type 26 will also have a wide selection of offensive missiles at its disposal. These will use a host of advanced combat systems to find and destroy their targets. Expect an integrated onboard system to run these and almost everything else on board, from cyber defense to bridge and navigation controls, and hell, probably the toaster. Along with a state-of-the-art communication suite capable of arousing even the most lethargic NAVCOM, there will be more sensors, radars, jammers, and decoy systems than I really want to list off. 
The integrated underwater warfare system will get a special mention though. First off, these ships will be built to have a minimal acoustic signature. Then this onboard system will be capable of a wide range of sonar activities, both hull mounted and towed. Now, if you combine this with the ship's torpedo countermeasures, the Type 26 is ready to engage in the most modern anti-sub operations. The vessel itself will be powered by a combined diesel electric or gas propulsion system. Provided by General Electric and Rolls-Royce respectively, these engines will propel Canadian sailors to a maximum speed of 27 knots, with a cruising range of 7,000 nautical miles or 13,000 kilometers. The Canadian Type 26 is also expected to carry a CH-148 Cyclone helicopter and provide the ability to embark multiple UAV systems. That good looking boat bay is reconfigurable and will hold a single 9 meter rescue boat and two smaller multi roll boats. This time around, the Navy promises to maintain your sanity on those long voyages. This will be done by prioritizing the ability to digitally connect with your families back home and then by housing certain amenities on board. These will include a medical facility along with a dedicated gym and fitness center, so no more working out under the stairs for you. Okay, now that you're caught up on the specs of the vessel, you should also know the government pinky swear promises that 15 of these fancy floating gunboats will only cost you a tidy sum of $60 billion. Now if we can pull that figure off, we will fall somewhere in the same ballpark as our Commonwealth allies. This price tag supposedly includes the necessary ammunition, training, support, and infrastructure we will require in the future, so it's a package deal. An entirely new land-based testing facility is being built in Halifax specifically for this project. Building here will create several benefits for Canada, including increasing employment, industry, and supply chain capacity for years to come. While a major downside could be the 55% increase in labor costs compared to what we would see if built in the United States. Despite this, having them made here would allow us to smack a big Made in Canada sticker on its ass. The construction of the first vessel is expected to begin in 2023-24, with the first delivery early next decade. Now when all 15 vessels are finally completed, Canada will be the proud owner of the world's largest fleet of the Type 26. That's assuming it isn't plagued with electrical problems. For now, come check out our video on the Arctic Offshore Patrol ships, the other brand new vessels we're spoiling the Navy with.